I love math and we can spend all day in Excel. We can take a look at, you know, the performance and understand the basics of the bidding formula. Um, but again, we are not going to be able to interpret the volume of data or the number of levers and inputs the same way as a machine. And bidding is so critical to making sure you're not wasting ad spend, you are accelerating and, and you're visible in all the places that you need to be, that you're controlling your budgets through bidding and not just through budget caps, um, that you're able to maintain performance and volume throughout the day, that you're not capping out at 6 p.m. and losing evening traffic. Yep. Um, so yeah, my words of advice is if you're not doing it, run and run fast to uh, your nearest AI provider. AI is changing the way that people sell on Amazon, Walmart, and beyond. AI is also a very familiar element to Takeometrics and has been integral and foundational in Takeometrics flywheel for years. This discussion with Laura Pattison from Takeometrics will help you understand what AI can do in the context of e-commerce advertising and selling, and it'll give you a better understanding of how you specifically can leverage AI technology to grow your Amazon and Walmart business today and what the not so distant future might look like. So let's jump in and let's hear what Laura has to say about AI and e-commerce. Hello everyone, we're continuing our conversation about artificial intelligence here with Laura Pattison. Laura, if you've watched our content before, you've certainly seen Laura uh, explain all sorts of things about advertising, metrics, and everything in between. This conversation is all about contextualizing AI, making it really tangible. And just for preface of this, uh, kind of the big picture, big idea here is that AI has come into mainstream media, social media a lot more recently from things like ChatGPT. Tikometrics has been dealing with, has been, uh, well, integrating AI into our technology for a, a real long time, helping people on Amazon, Walmart sell and advertise much more effectively. But the point of this conversation is to give specific examples for how we are leveraging AI in uh, our technology and for sellers to make it much more tangible. So I'm here with Laura, who has experience leveraging that AI to help sellers grow on Amazon and beyond. So Laura, I think a really good place to start, we were talking just briefly before this about kind of giving an analogy for AI. We had a conversation with Jake Wilk. Jake gave the analogy of a ship. You were talking about either a smart car or a plane. Yeah. Could you give us an analogy just to explain the concept of how artificial intelligence is being used to help sellers? Absolutely. So a lot of these are the, the same conversation, right? Some type of vehicle that's trying to get us from point A to point B. Mm. Um, and there's some level of technology involved. And it's all about how you use that technology. So you can look at a self-driving car, and that could be you know, really using the technology and leaning on the technology. But there are going to be points where we still have to manually intervene. And, and that's important. Um, there is, so I, I like to use the self-driving car versus, um, you know, an Uber driver. And so that's when we look at our managed services is mm. maybe not needing to know how to drive the car, but knowing that car is going to get you from point A to point B. And you've got a driver that knows how to use the technology, knows how to get you there. Um, not only how to use the vehicle to get you there, but the map and the route um, and the strategy, the roads to take yep. to, to get you to that final destination. I like the analogy of an Uber driver because it's a person, but all of these conversations have something to do with technology, a person leveraging the technology and both of those working together to get you from point A to point B. Um, and so that's the broad concept. And let's drill down into a very specific example of that. Yeah. Let's talk about bidding. Okay. First though, can you just give people context when we, before we talk about AI and its involvement with bidding, just give us a preface for, for like what we're talking about when we say bidding, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, so bidding is going to be identifying the appropriate value of any, you know, target. When mm -hmm. we talk about target, uh, we're not talking about the store, we're talking about, you know, a keyword, uh, an auto target, whether that's your close, loose, complementary, or substitute, we're going to be talking about category targeting or a product attribute targeting or that ASIN. Um, so when we use target, that's what we're looking at. And so for any of those targets, anytime we are matching uh, a customer intent with our product or our, the targets that we have, we're trying to identify the appropriate value of what we want to pay. Mm. And in order to understand what we want to pay, we have to understand what the value of that click is worth. Yep. Um, and then figure out how much we want to get out of that click, right? And that's our efficiency target. And so that's really what we're talking about when we talk about bidding. So 
So that's bidding just in general. How is our technology, how is AI impacting our technologies? Um, I'm trying to think of the right word. What is AI's impact on bidding through Ticometrics? Absolutely. So, you know, if you go back and you go down to the most stripped down version of a car and you've got your manual vehicle and your gas pedal and your steering wheel, you can get to where you're going. It may not be as comfortable if you've ever, you know, tried to drive a manual on a hill on I a rainy not, day. <laughs> um, but, you know, there, there can be pain points for sure. Um, it's leaning so much on the manual intervention. And when you're trying to do this at scale with thousands of keywords, that can be a pain point. So yep. um, AI is allowing us to do this at scale. Um, the manual intervention should understand how and why it's being done, but AI is involved in many different places. Number one, again, as I said, the scale of it. Number two, when we don't necessarily have enough data um, behind a keyword to begin with, you know, everything that we break out is gonna start as a new target without that historical data to tell us what that click is worth. Um, and so we're leaning on AI for this discovery period of, is it worth this? And so we use a reinforcement learning algorithm to say, I'm gonna push the bit up, I'm gonna pull it back and start to see where I'm getting that data. Once I get that data, then I can start to lean into that value-based bid. Why is, because the discovery phase came up with Robbie as well. What, what is so significant about the discovery phase and AI? Like why, why is AI, uh, obviously that came up a couple times because it's important and there's a separation there. There's the beginning discovery phase and then there's leveraging the accumulated data right. over time to make maybe more intelligent decisions. But what about the discovery phase is so important and why is AI specifically very important during that phase? Yeah, AI is really important in that phase because number one, everybody has to go through it at a certain point. Right. Anytime, whether you have an, a, an aged catalog or an aged account, you're still breaking out new terms. There's still new ways that people are looking for your product or a solution mm -hmm. that your product answers. And so, you know, if you want to grow your account, you're going to be expanding your targets and AI, as you go through that, there's going to be a discovery phase. Now, I do highly recommend, you know, even with AI involved, you lean on the data that you have. So you should be looking at, you know, other the performance of very similar targets. Um, when I say similar, I mean product level, uh, price point of the product, um, level of the funnel. So you don't want to like compare a top of funnel to a bottom of funnel. And you can get an indicator of where you should start. Mm. But everybody is going to go through that discovery phase. Um, beyond that, that is a point where we don't have as much built into the scientific base of it. There's not statistical significance at that point. And so we really want to build in um, some type of solution where we're not leaning on throwing a dart at the wall or leaning on magic where we can start to build in some scientific base into how we're going through that to reduce the amount of wasted ad spend that's involved during that discovery mm. phase. So is it fair to say that AI helps with the process of not having as much data? Like when you don't have as much data, AI helps kind of extract out the movements that should be made because of its ability to interpret the small amount of data that's there already or make quick decisions? Is that yes, mostly? Yes, yes and. So that is absolutely, I, I don't want to dilute that point at all. That is a solid foundation of that. It can also take the data that it has in other parts of the account Got it. Got and it. use it, that and apply that um, to the decisions that it's making. Got it. So I want to focus on the future here. Um, what are the implications with two sides? I'll give the two sides and then we'll jump to the first. The implications for uh, what's coming down the line for take a metrics from AI. Sure. So kind of what's what's coming because of AI? What is up next for take a metrics? And also, what are the implications for the future of e-commerce in general because of what AI is doing? So let's start with take a metrics. What are the implications for the future of take a metrics because of AI? Yeah, the future of take a metrics because of AI are, are include recent releases, you know, the as I think um, Jake probably spoke yep. about the uh, seasonality periods or the predictive modeling of what's happening after or before tentpole event days. Um, when you're leaning on historical data, you're rooted in the past, right? You're rooted in what has already happened. And so as you start to see a change in conversion rate, you can be a little bit behind the curve. Mm. In something like Prime Day, you know, that isn't great during Cyber Weekend because you really want to 
hit the punch hard, right? When yep. that is first kicking off, same with Prime Day. That's such a short period of time. And you wanna make sure that you are able to capture the growth very, very quickly. And mm -hmm. so AI is able to support that. Um, beyond that, inventory indicators of, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to go out of stock or I have a lot of stock. What changes do we want to make? And so, you know, to lean in on the point of what is the overall future of e-commerce with AI and AI bidding, um, it really leans into the number of inputs and different levers. Mm. The seasonality piece, the inventory piece, the discovery, the change in behavior, the amount of competition out there, and being able to intercept so many data points that would usually, if you're sitting there trying to do the math yourself manually, would overlap and start to pull you in different directions. Yep. It can synthesize that and, and create more clarity of that of the, from all of those data points than any human could, no matter how good they are. That changes the game for, for everyone. Any last words of advice or things that you'd say to people considering jumping into this technology if they haven't yet? Uh, do it and do it now. Mm. Um, I love math and we can spend all day in Excel. We can take a look at you know the performance and understand the basics of the bidding formula. Um, but again, we are not going to be able to interpret the volume of data or the number of levers and inputs the same way as a machine. And bidding is so critical to making sure you're not wasting ad spend, yep. you are accelerating and, and you're visible in all the places that you need to be, that you're controlling your budgets through bidding and not just through budget caps, um, mm. that you're able to maintain performance and volume throughout the day, that you're not capping out at 6 p.m. and losing evening traffic. Yep. Um, so yeah, my words of advice is if you're not doing it, run and run fast to uh, your nearest AI provider. Run now. <laughs> So good, thank you, Laura, for, for breaking this down. This is an incredibly nuanced conversation. There are a lot of different conversations we could have and will have, but this really helps contextualize, make it a bit more tangible, so thank you. You're welcome. Hey, thank you so much for joining this conversation about artificial intelligence. There's a lot to dive into when it comes to AI and e-commerce. Things are changing at a really rapid pace, and we're experiencing a lot of this ongoing. So subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with all things AI and e-com. And of course, to gain access to artificial intelligence in e-commerce, sign up for Metrics for free. You can start leveraging AI right now today in your own e-commerce operations and your own advertising on Amazon, Walmart, and beyond. And it's free to sign up and to check out. So click below to sign up for Metrics Flywheel 2.0 for free, and we'll see you there.